Hello students, my name is Nariman Merlim. I'm located in Baku and here you can see my mobile and email. Today we'll discuss practice test number one from official SAT study guide subject test physics of March 2017. The test that follows is an actual previously administered SAT subject test in physics. Test basics, number question 75 multiple choice questions. Timing 60 minutes. In this video, I will give simple solution based mainly on formulas. No calculator in SAT physics has bad side and good side. Uh, bad side is that students should be able to do simple arithmetic. Good side only simple formulas are needed. Let's start. Practice test one. No calculator. Questions one, two. At the upper panel you will see question and partly it will be at the lower panel and also there you will see some solutions. Let's start. The figure above represents a track on which an object slides without friction. The object is released from the top of the track in the position shown. Question 1. At which of the labeled points is the object's potential energy greatest? formula for potential energy is MGH. So potential energy is maximum when height is maximum. So maximum height is A, so we choose A. Question 2. At which of the label point is the object's kinetic energy greatest? Mechanical energy is sum of potential energy and kinetic energy. Because there is no friction, it will be constant. It means that when potential energy is minimum, kinetic energy will be maximum. Potential energy is minimum when height is minimum. So we choose height minimum, potential energy minimum, kinetic maximum. So B. Question 3. Question 3 we should look at another picture. A person throws a ball with an initial speed V0 from the deck of a house in any of the four initial directions shown in the diagram above. In each case, the ball is released at a height H above the ground. Air resistance is negligible. In which question three? In which case does the ball travel the greatest horizontal distance before hitting the ground? First of all, case B and C, they have zero horizontal components, so we exclude these choices. Uh, horizontal distance will be horizontal component multiplied by time of flight. Horizontal component, if we compare A and D, greatest horizontal component is with, v uh, with A, it is V0, here will be V0 times cosine, or sine doesn't matter. And here, ball is going to start from zero vertical velocity, accelerates at 10 meters per second. Here, it has some initial velocity and accelerates at 10 meters per second. So it moves always at greater velocity at an A, so it will take less time to reach the ground. So greatest time and X component is with A, so we choose answer A. Question 4. In which case does the ball have the greater speed when it hits the ground? In all cases, mechanical energy is mgh plus half mv squared, mv0 squared. So they all have the same mechanical energy. When they reach the ground, all this mechanical energy turns into kinetic energy. So all of them have the same kinetic energy. And as kinetic energy is linked by this formula, half mv squared, they all have the same speed. Question 5. In which case does the ball have the greatest acceleration just before it hits the ground? In all cases, the same downward constant acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. Question 6. In which case is the ball in the air for the longest time? 
Uh, let's compare first A and B. So in B, ball moves up. For a while at the top, velocity is zero, and then as if it is dropped and goes down. So if we compare A and B, uh, uh, so we have object dropped from some height, here greater height than here. In B, it goes up and falls from higher position than A. Formula for constant acceleration is ut plus dt squared over 2. u is initial velocity 0. So we have height equals dt squared over 2. Because greater height we have in B, takes more time to fall down for B, but B also goes up. So the longest time is with B. Talking about C and D, they travel height H at higher speeds, as I explained, at higher initial speeds at with the same acceleration. So they will reach the ground faster. Question 7, 8. Question 7 and 8 refer to the following properties of light waves. 7. In a vacuum, all colors of light have the same value for which of the properties. Of course, it is speed and it is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. When light passes from air into glass, which of the property changes? So frequency doesn't change. Uh, in modern media, speed decreases according to wave equation V equals F lambda. Lambda is V over F. So V decreases, lambda also decreases. So frequency doesn't change, frequency and speed decreases. Next question. Question 10, 10, 9, 10. A block on a frictionless tabletop is attached to a horizontal spring that is fixed to a wall, as shown above. The block is pulled to the right. Choose answer to the following question from the set of graphs below. First, we will discuss this question. Question 9. Which graph represents the magnitude of the linear restoring force as a function of the function of the block's displacement from its equilibrium position? First of all, this is standard model which undergoes simple harmonic motion. So force, restoring force is proportional to displacement. On the other side, for according to Hooke's law, we have force from spring equals minus kx. So gra in both cases, force is proportional to displacement. So graph should be straight line through origin. Let us see. Yes, we have such graph. B is straight line through origin. Question 10. Which graph represents the elastic potential energy stored in the spring as a function of the block displacement from equilibrium? Equation for an elastic potential energy is half kx squared. So we expect parabola. Let's see whether we have here parabola. Yes, we have here parabola. Question 9, 10 is over. 11, 12. A particle moves along the x-axis and is acted on by a net force directed along the line of motion. Possible graphs of velocity vx as a function of time t are shown below. All graphs are drawn to the same scale. Question 11. Which graph is not possible for a force that is constant in magnitude and direction? Constant force along the line of motion means that acceleration which is f over m, also is constant. Acceleration is gradient, so we should expect constant gradient. So constant, 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 co constant, and here non-constant gradient, so this is not possible. Question 12. Which graph describes a situation in which the velocity of the particle changes direction between time 0 and t1? Change of direction means that 
velocity changes sign. Let us see whether we have, yes, we have such picture. First it was negative velocity, then it is positive. So sign is changed, and this is the answer. Question 13, 15. The following diagrams each represent an isolated charge plus Q capital at the center of the circle shown. In each case, a test charge small, small plus Q is moved from rest at X to rest at Y by an external force along the path shown. Question 13. The network done by exerted force is maximum in which of these cases? First of all, by definition, potential difference is work done by charge moved between points. It means that work done equals charge moved by potential difference. Uh, on the other side, for point charges, potential is inversely proportional to all distance according to this formula. It means that for these circles or surfaces we have the same potential. This is why they are called equipotential surfaces. If you move object along the surfaces, no potential is changing and you are not doing any work. So 2 and 3 we had 0 work done, because change of potential is 0, work is 0. For 1, potential is increasing, because closer to charge, potential is greater. And if we multiply charge by change of potential, we will have work done, so greatest is here, because here and here is zero. Question 14. No network is done by external force in which of these cases? As we discussed before, two and three, no work is done, so we answer this question. Question 14. The electric potential at Y is higher than X in which of these cases? For 2 and 3, potentials at X and Y are equal, and here potential at Y is greater because, according, as I mentioned, according to this formula, the closer to the charge, the greater is potential. So potential at Y is greater than potential X in picture 1. We finish with question 15, and we go to question 16. Now we go to question 16. The statements below describe experimental observations of processes involving electrons. First, an electric current passes through a gas and a characteristic spectrum is observed. So when current passes through a gas, atoms are excited, electrons go from lower to higher energy levels, which are lines, and then return back, they go down. When they go down, uh, light, uh, photons are emitted, light is emitted, and because they go from line to line, we have line emission spectra of this gas. Second, electrons are scattered from the surface of a metal, and diffraction pattern is observed. Electron diffraction of atomic structure on atomic structure proves wave property of electrons, which are otherwise particles. Third, electrons are dislodged from a metal surface that has been struck by photons, and the energy of the electron is measured. Here we have a photoelectric effect. Light behaves as stream of particles, photons. Electron absorb photons energy and can escape with different energies, depending how deep it is inside the metal. Question 16. Evidence for the particle nature of light is provided by which of the pheno observations? So it is observation 3, photoelectric effect. Evidence that an electron needs 
minimum energy to leave a surface is provided by which of the observation. So, uh, for any metal, we have minimum energy, which is called work function, and this energy is needed for electron to escape. So it is three. Question eighteen nineteen. Questions 18-19 refer to the following types of images that may be formed when an object is placed in front of a lens or mirror. First, real larger than object, second, real smaller than object, and third, virtual. Question 18. Which of these types of images can be formed by the convex mirror shown above? convex mirror create only virtual images, this you should remember. Which of types of images can be formed by converging lens shown above? Converging lens looks this way, thick in the middle, thin at the end. Converging lens can create all three, all these three possible situations, all three types of images. It was question 19. Now question 12. 20, sorry. Standing waves are produced on the strings of a guitar. The following represent possible comparisons of the fundamental frequency and the fundamental wavelength of the wave when a change is made. For each of the following situations, indicate how the second standing wave compares to the first standing wave. Question 20. The guitarist first plucks a thin string and then a thick string, where both strings are the same length and under the same tension. Length is the same for both cases because it is associated with the length of the string wavelength. Uh, formula for velocity in this situation is given by this square root of tension by mass per unit length. Thickness will be greater, so gr thickness increase, mu increase, V decrease, so let's be from wave equation, we know that f equals v over lambda, so if we decrease, lambda doesn't change, f also decreases. So we have lower f and the same wavelength, so it is choice b. 21. The guitarist plucks a string, then tightens in and plucks it again. Tightens means tension will be increased, so wavelength again is the same. The same formula, but this time we change increased tension, so speed increases. According to f equals v over lambda, f also increases. So we have higher frequency, but the same wavelength, so it is E. Now question 22 from part B. Which of the following is the correct unit for the coefficient of friction mu. Friction force equals mu times normal reaction. Rewriting this formula for mu, we have force over force, newton over newton, so no unit, so we choose no unit. 23. A rocket-powered sled is accelerating along a straight level track with a constant acceleration of magnitude 2 meters per second squared. By how much will the speed of the sled change in 3 seconds? Acceleration equals change of velocity by time. Change of velocity will be acceleration by time. Substituting numbers, we get 60. 24. The block shown above is pulled over a rough horizontal surface by the tension force T in the string. The velocity of the block does not change, and therefore it may be correctly inferred that. So here, 
the keyword is velocity doesn't change constant velocity it means that forces are balanced and let us see which choices we have The inertial mass of the block is infinite nonsense. The inertial mass of the block is zero nonsense. C. The force due to friction and the tension are equal in magnitude. Balanced forces. We choose C. Twenty-five. A two kilogram box is placed on a scale in an elevator. When the elevator is not moving, the reading on the scale is 20 newtons. When the elevator is accelerating upwards at 2 meters per second squared, the reading on the scale will be most nearly. Now we look to the picture. So this is a picture of elevator. Instead of box, we have a person. Doesn't matter. So the person is pressing on the lift and presses pushing on the a box, uh, if we talk about box, so by normal reaction. So normal reaction is greater than mg. This is why we have resultant force upward and it equals ma. So resultant force equals ma. F normal reaction minus mg equals ma. Normal reaction equals mg plus ma. We substitute mg, which is reading on the scale so it's equal to the weight ma and we have 24 question 26 the observation observation of diffraction patterns produced when monochromatic light is incident on a narrow slit provide evidence for which of the following here the keyword is diffraction pattern Diffraction is wave property. This is why we choose the wave nature of light. 27. The phenomenon responsible for the separation of colors in formation of a rainbow is also cause of which of the following. Here, the keyword is separation. Separation of color, if we look through, we have only in the last case when Spectrum is formed by a glass prism, so we choose E. Right, next question, 28. A small cork moves under the influence of a water wave whose shape at a particular time is shown in the graph above. If the wave has a speed of 2 meters per second, how long does it take for the cork to make one complete oscillation? So cork oscillate, frequency of oscillation of cork equals to frequency of oscillation of the uh, water waves and periods will be equal. So we should find period of oscillation of the cork and period of wave. Uh, from the picture we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five wavelengths cover 25 meters. It means that each wavelength is 5 meters. Velocity of the wave is 2, so using wave equation f equals b over lambda, we get 0 0.4 hertz. So period will be 1 over f, so we have 2.5 seconds. And we have such answer. 25. Oh, 29, sorry. An astronaut in a pla is on a planet whose mass is twice the mass of Earth and whose diameter is the same as Earth's diameter. The astronaut's weight on this planet is Weight is gravitational attraction according to this formula. In case 2, the force will be this expression, but mass we should make 2 times greater than first case, so we make it 2 times greater. Take 2 2 out of bracket and we get exact value 2 F1, so 2 times more, twice the what is it on Earth. Question 30. Question 
equation 30. A towing train undergoes three periods of constant speed as shown in the graph above. 6 seconds moving at 2 meters per second, 4 seconds standing still and 10 seconds moving at 3 meters per second. The average speed of the train for this 20 seconds is most ne nearly... So, uh, average speed formula is here. It is total distance by total time. And they help you, they indicate that it is 20 seconds total time. So how to find total distance? Distance is uh, area under the graph. So we have one rectangle, 2 by 6, 12 area. Another rectangle is 10 by 3, 30. So total is 42 meters. And total time we take all trip 20 seconds, regardless that it was not moving for 5 seconds. So 42 by 20 give us 2.1 meters per second. This is question 30. Our next question is 31. Let us look at this question. Velocity dx versus time t for an object moving along the x-axis is graph above 31. The object is instantaneously at rest for each of the points. At rest means zero velocity. So zero velocity we have at point B and E. The magnitude of the object acceleration is a minimum in the region between which two points. Acceleration equals slope or gradient. Here gradient is not zero, here zero, and here no zero. So C between C and D. Acceleration is zero, so it is minimum. At which point is the object the greatest distance from its position at time zero? Actually, uh, we are asked about displacement, resultant displacement. If we compare point A and B, we see that area under the graph for B will be greater, and area under the graph give us displacement. Let us see how much is displacement for B. It is triangle 2V, 2T, and half of this. So 2V times 2T divided by 2, 2V, T, and it is displaced to the left. Then after 2T, two, two it returns all, starts returning back forward, let's see. From B to C, we have triangle T, V, divide by 2, half vt. Then we have cd, we have rectangle, v by t. And then we have again triangle, positive displacement, vt. So actually, area of this trapezium is 2 vt. It means that at point E, it returns to initial position. And the greatest distance from initial position is at B. So it is very far from point, initial point, to VT distance, and then it's returning back, 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 and returns back. So greatest distance is at B. Next question. 34. An object of mass M is initially and temperature T0. Amount of heat Q is absorbed by the object, raising its temperature to T. What is specific heat of the object? Uh, formula linking, uh, formula for heat energy uh, bringing to rise of temperature is the following. Rewriting is for specific capacity and changing delta T for Tf minus T0 we're getting equation C. Now, question 35, 37. A heat engine is represented in the figure below. During each cycle of the engine, absorb, the engine absorbs 600 joules of thermal energy from heat source and exhausts 500 joules of thermal energy to the heat. Sink. So 
A question. 35. How much work is done by the engine during uh, each cycle? So, how useful equals input minus weighted. So, work done will be heat input minus heat wasted. 60 minus 100 gives us 100 joule. 36. If engine operates at 20 cycles per second and does x joules of work during each cycle, which of the following is an expression for the power generated by the engine? So power is total work divided by time. 20 cycle each give us x joules, so we have 20 x joule is total work per second. So we trans so this meaning of the per second means one second. So we divide by one second, we get 20 times x. 37. If the temperature of the heat source and heat sinks are 360 and 270 kelvins respectively, what is the theoretical ideal maximum efficiency of the engine? So we use formula for efficiency in which we have this time temperatures, we multiply by 100 and we get 28, 25. Question 38, 39. The figure above depicts, depicts a thick glass mark, initially at room temperature, in which a sensitive liquid in glass thermometer has been placed. A student pours very hot water into the mark. 38. The student carefully observes the reading on the thermometer and sees that it initially drops and then gradually rises. The student's observations can be explained by which of the following. So, first, of course, it heated the glass of the thermometer, it expands, and as a result, level of liquid drops. Soon after the hot water is poured into the glass mark, the mark cracks open. This is mostly likely due to which of the following? Cracking is due to the difference, different expansion. Of course, first inner part of uh, mug is heated and expands, and then outer. As a result, we have cracking. Question 40. Two samples of an element are prepared, each containing a different isotope of that element. Which of the following properties of individual neutral atoms is not the same for both samples? Question 40. Isotope has the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Hence, different mass number. So here we see atomic mass, so it is mass number A. Next question. A spaceship is traveling towards the Earth at speed of 2 times 10 meters per second when it fires a laser pulse directly at the Earth. What will observers on Earth measure the speed of the laser pulse to be? One of the postulates of theory of relativity in all frames of references, light in vacuum has speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Remember this number and we see this number as answer choice D. According to present experimental evidence, which of the following is true of protons and electrons? 
the charges are of the same sign, wrong, proton is positive, electron negative. They have the same mass, wrong, proton is 2000 times greater mass than electron. They are not known to decay, this is on the question mark. They both have made of quark, are both made of quarks, so protons are made of quarks, but electrons are not made of quarks. They are about the same size, of course, the electron is much smaller. So which by method of elimination, A, B, and G, E, we get answer C. This special method of elimination, if you know 4 out of 5, you can get correct answer. Correct statement about atomic nuclei include which of the following. So what we know about nucleus. Nucleus consists of protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged, neutrons no charge, electrons negatively charged. Mass of electron is one th two thousandth of mass of neutron and proton. Let us see what we have here. Two nuclei with the same charge contain the same number of protons. Yes, because only protons are charged particles and they are positively charged. Nuclei are positively charged, yes, because protons are positively charged. The nuclear contains a small fraction of mass of an atom. Wrong, because the rest mass is electrons, which is much less than the main ma mass of protons and neutrons in nucleus. Next question, 44. Equal charges are placed on two identical conducting balls that are suspended from a common point by very long strings, as shown above. When they reach equilibrium, the balls are at angle theta from the vertical. A set identical but uncharged ball is touched to the charged ball on the left and then removed. Which of the following shows the possible position of the balls when they are again when they again reach equilibrium? So if we touch left ball with another ball, our charged ball will be discharged, it means that it loses some charge and charge becomes less. Less charge means less repulsion force between these two charges. But the forces will be equal according to third Newton's law. So they repel each other equally with equal force, but force will be smaller. As a result, the angle will be less. So we should see picture with each equal but less angles. Here is the choice D. You see angle is less, decreased, but equal. 45. Question 45. Question 45. Two charged particles in a uniform electric field between two large parallel plates are at the position shown above when they are simultaneously released from rest. If the two particles reach the negative plate at the same time, one can definitely conclude that they have the same. Okay, so particles are positively charged. They move at constant acceleration because constant force constant acceleration in uniform field. So for constant acceleration, S equals UT plus half AT squared. So they start from rest. This is why S equals half AT squared. So they travel the same distance when they reach another plate and it takes the same time. So they have the same acceleration. On the other hand, Acceleration is force over mass, and force is charged by field strength. If we substitute this expression into the formula for mass, we get acceleration equals Qm field strength. Field strength is the same, acceleration is the same, we have the same charge by mass, so ratio of charge by mass, and this is the last answer, so we choose E. This is question 45, we go to question 46. Our next question is 46.
The force on a straight current carrying wire in a magnetic field that is perpendicular to the wire depends on which of the following. Formula of force acting on current is ILB sin theta. Angle is 90 degrees, so sine is 1, so we have current, length, and field strength. All three are important, strength, current, and length. A number of small magnet magnetic compasses on a wood tabletop are oriented as shown above. These compasses are most likely situated. So what we see here, we see here that compasses show us circular magnetic field around P. It means that we have wire with current and it is perpendicular to the tabletop. Let us see which choices we have. So around a current carrying wire passing perpendicular through a hole in the table at po point P. That is our choice. Next question. A positively charged particle moves to the left through a magnetic field B that is directed out of page, as shown above. What is the direction of the force exerted on the particle by the magnetic field? So positive charge moves to the left, so it is the same as we have conventional current to the left. Uh, now we take uh, left hand Hold all fingers, open first finger and point it along the field, so towards us. Then open second finger, this will, should sh indicate the direction of conventional current. Turn your palm clockwise, for example, until uh, your fi second finger doesn't show to the left, but uh, still the first finger should point towards you. Open thrust, or open thumb, and shows upwards. So the thrust will be to the top of the page. So here we have Fleming's left hand rule: first finger field, second conventional current, and then thumb thrust. You see F F C C T H T H. Forty nine. Uh, 49, um, just a moment, right. Which of the following statements is true of a transformer? Here we have a picture of a simple transformer. Main parts are two coils. It also can have uh, iron core that increases the flux linkage between these coils. How does it work? Alternating current in the primary coil generates changing magnetic field in the iron core that induces EMF and current in the secondary coil. Electromagnetic induction takes place. The purpose of transformer is to increase step up transformers or decrease step down transformers the voltage. Let's see what we have here. It uses an iron core to reduce the magnetic flux, absolutely vice versa. The voltage induced in the secondary coil is due to the changing magnetic flux set up by a changing current in the primary coil. Absolutely true. Question 50. A bar of conducting metal moves with, with speed V in uniform magnetic field in which of the following situation, will a difference in electric potential exist between N1 and 2 on the bar? So all three directions should be perpendicular, wire, field, and velocity. And the first picture will have it. So wire, velocity, and out of, into the page. So all three directions are at 90 degrees. 
Why does our calendar usually include a leap year every four years? Introduction. One cycle of rotation around Sun is taken as year. Rotation of Earth. It equals 365 and about a quarter of a day. This is why every four years we have a leap, additional year, which almost covers missed quarters. So A, first is talking about Moon, nothing to do with this. B, the period of Earth's orbit is not an integer multiple of the period of Earth's rotation on it. Yes, it's not 365, but it is also fraction. So this is a choice, B. In some designs for high-speed magnetically levitated trains, there are superconducting electromagnets in the bottom of each car. This design is chosen because when compared to conventional electromagnets, superconducting electromagnets, and then we have some choices. So first of all, what is superconductivity? Almost zero resistance and as a result heat losses when current flows. Power losses due heating effect of current is given by this formula P equals I squared R. When R is zero, power is also zero. So in, in the choices we have used less electrical power. Question 53. The wavelength of a wave is plotted versus its period on the graph above. Which of the following graphs best represents the wavelength versus frequency. Here we see straight line passing through origin, so wavelength is directly proportional to period. On the other hand, period is 1 over f. So it is inversely proportional to frequency. It means that wavelength will be also inversely proportional to frequency. Inverse proportion, let's see whether we have inverse proportion. This is inverse proportion. Frequency increase, wavelength decrease. Next question. Question 54. The speed of light in a glass prism varies with frequency of the light. 55. The bottom half of a converging lens is covered so li that light from an object can only pass through the top half of the lens. What image will appear on a screen on the opposite side of the lens? To find image, we use standard rays. For example, for converging lens, which is mentioned here. We use one ray going through optical center and doesn't change direction, and another ray goes parallel to optical axis and bends through focal length, point F. As a result, these two standard rays intersect and show us the position where the image will be. Regardless of the standard rays, there are many rays sent by this object, and all of them will form image of the same position. So if we cover any part of the lens, we still will get the same image, but image will be dimmer because less light is forming this image. So the entire object is correct answer. A wave has a frequency of 60 Hz. Which are the properties of the wave can be determined from this information alone? So, period is 1 over frequency, so we can find period. Question 57, 58. In an experiment, a student has, a connect, has connected three initially uncharged capacitors and a battery, as shown in the figure above. 57. What is the equivalent capacitance of the circuit between A and B? So I have copied this diagram here, 
and first I find equivalent capacitance of these two capacitors connected in series. For series connection we use reciprocal addition formula, this is the reciprocal addition formula, and don't forget that C is still reciprocal, so when you get 1 over C equals 1 over 4, C will be 4. So equivalent, equivalent capacitance of this part will be 4. So our circuit turns into this circuit. Now what we see in this circuit? In this circuit we have two capacitors connected in series, in parallel. So they connect in parallel, we just add 4, and we found here 4, so 4 and 4 makes 8 picofarads. So formula is for, so these formulas are opposite to resistors. So series and parallel for capacitors are vice versa that for resistors. 58. What are the voltages across the capacitors after equilibrium has been reached? So capacitor C1 is charged until the, it has the same voltage, 6 volt, but vice versa on it. So 6 volt on C1. Uh, the same 6 volt are shared by C2 and C3 equally, because they're equal. So 3 volt here, 3 volt here. This is our choice. 6 volt, 3, 3. Question 5960. Uh, to confirm Ohm's law, an experiment is performed with a battery and a meter, a voltmeter, a fixed value resistor, and a variable resistor. Which of the following circuits would allow you to take appropriate measurements to verify Ohm's law? Uh, for Ohm's law, we should have fixed element measure voltage across and current through. So element should be fixed, it should be fixed resistor. Voltmeter should be in parallel to element. So we're getting this circuit. So fixed element, voltmeter in, voltmeter in parallel, and a meter should be in series, so current flow. So the rest, wrong, not fixed element, Mm, a meter is in parallel, a meter is, I don't know what is, this is, a mess. So answer is A. 60. If R is resistance, B is voltage, and I is current, which of the following shows the relationship between the graph quantities that is consistent with Ohm's law. In each case, assume the third quantity is held constant. First of all, what is Ohm's law? Ohm's law states, and co at constant temperature, current in a resistor is directly proportional to potential difference. So resistance is constant. And graph of voltage versus current should be straight line passing through origin. Uh, so it sh should be VI or RV, and current should be straight line. So you see here we have the correct answer. Here not directly proportional, and here resistance is not constant, and here is not constant. That was question 60. Our next question is 61. To determine the power dissipated by a resistor, a student obtains the following data. Potential difference across resistor, current through resistor. If the power is expressed as 20 watts plus minus x percent, x is most nearly. So here we have not absolute uncertainty, but percentage uncertainty. And result is power. Uh, we get power when we multiply current by voltage. Because we multiply to find 
percentage uncertainty of power, we should add percentage uncertainties of current and voltage. So 5 and 25 give us 30%. 32. A steel spring with no zero mass has zero elastic potential energy when no forces are exerted on it. A mass is attached to one end of the spring and allowed to oscillate on a horizontal frictionless tabletop. True statement about the spring includes the following, so we should look to the choices. When spring is compressed, it will have elastic potential energy greater than zero. So elastic potential equals half kx squared. So when it is compressed, it is more than zero, so this is true. When the spring is stretched, it will have elastic potential energy greater than zero. The same formula, again true. The spring will always have zero kinetic energy. That's not right, because mass will oscillate, uh, so it will move forward and backward, and uh, kinetic energy is mv squared over 2, so it will not be uh, always zero. It will be more or equal to zero, mostly not equal to zero, it will be zero only at the end, for a short time. Sixty-three. A foam ball is dropped from a tall tower. Assume that there is no wind, but the air resistance is directly proportional to the ball speed. Which of the following is true about the ball's motion for a short time after it is released? Its potential energy remains constant. That's wrong because potential energy is mgh, h decreases, potential energy decreases. Its speed decreases. Uh, its speed most of the time increases uh, only at some moment later when weight is equal to E resistance, it stops changing. But at, after a short time, it is increasing. Acceleration decreases. Yes, acceleration decreases. Why? Acceleration equals resultant force divided by mass. Resultant force is weight, mg, minus air resistance. When ball is for, uh, speeding up, air resistance increases, resultant force decreases, and the acceleration decreases, so C is true. As a result, its acceleration is constant, but non-zero is wrong, and its acceleration is zero is wrong. 64. When the air resistance on the ball equals the force of gravity on it, the ball has a constant balance forces, velocity is constant, so A is true. Let's consider other. Total energy. Why it is not constant? Because we have air resistance, part of mechanical energy turns into heat. Uh, non-zero uh, non net force acting on it. Uh, so, f constant. Fo net force is not constant. Acceleration of magnet greater than zero, but less than G. Acceleration is not constant. Acceleration of magnet equal to G. No, it is not constant. Which of the following describes the condition under which the total moment of a system of particles is conserved? So here we should recall principle of conservation of momentum. If no external force acts upon a system, the total moment of the system remains constant. So we choose only whenever no net external force acts on the system. 66. Uh, what is the centripetal force on an object of mass 4 kg traveling in a circular path with a radius of 20 meters at a speed meters at a speed of 2 meters per second? So we use formula straight formula for centripetal force and the square of R. Don't uh, forget to make a square of speed, 2 squared, which, which gives us 4, 67. Uh, in an electron microscope, the beam of electron is focused by the strongest force acting on moving electron is magnetic force. 
out of the forces, so magnetic force. A person stands on a sled on a frozen lake. The friction between the sled and the ice is negligible. Initially, the person and the sled are motionless. The person then walks on the sled to, toward a dog, as shown above. While the person is walking on the sled, how do the person and the sled each move with respect to the dog? According to Sir Newton's law, a person is pushed by sled forward, so it moves forward, pushing sled backward. Another explanation can be as the person moves to the right to keep center of mass motionless, sled should move to the right, to the left, sorry. So we use uh, person towards the dog and sled away from the dog. Next, 69. Before reaching the end of the sled, the person stops walking. Which of the following describes the velocity of the person as the sled with respect to the dog after the person has stopped walking? Uh, total momentum is conserved because we don't have friction, no external force. To uh, total momentum before was zero, uh, later, afterwards, it also should be zero. As the person stops, sled also should stop, both zero velocity. A 0 0.2 kilogram disc sliding at 2 meters per second on table with negligible friction as shown above strikes as 1 kilogram disc sliding at 2 meters per second in the same direction. After the collision, the 0 0.2 kilogram disc flies backwards at 2 meters per second. What is the speed of 1 kilogram disc after the collision? Let's uh, take positive direction to the right. I have drawn picture before and after. Because positive direction is to the right, before we have positive velocity plus 8 meters per second and plus 2 meters per second. After collision, minus 2 meters per second and unknown z. So momentum before equals momentum after. This is the expression of momentum before and this is the expression of momentum after. We substitute numbers and we get z equals 4. 41. At the eastern, shown in the following diagrams, an object that is moving horizontally to the right with velocity v is acted on by a net force. In which of these cases is kinetic energy of the object not changing? Uh, one of the explanations is using link between work and energy change. To change kinetic energy, work should be done. Work equals force times displacement by, by cosinus angle between them. So it is zero when angle is zero. So when force is perpendicular displacement, displacement or velocity, because velocity and displacement are parallel, then we have this case, no change of velocity. Perpendicular. Uh, another approach is the following. If force is perpendicular, then component along the Velocity is zero. It means that we, we don't have acceleration along velocity. Velocity doesn't change. Another explanation. Question 72. The figure above shows the trajectory of a soccer ball kicked by a player. The speed with which the ball leaves the player's foot is V0. The initial angle between the tangent to the trajectory of the horizontal is theta 0, which can be any angle between 0 and 90. If air resistance is negligible, which of the following is certain to increase both the distance of the kick and the time the ball is in the air. First of all, at the at initial moment, we have velocity V0. Uh, we can consider two components. Vertical, initial vertical component is V0 sine theta. Horizontal, V0 cosine theta. With this component, V0 sine theta, it goes up and reaches at the top 0, then goes down. We can find time up, time down will be the same, and uh, 
So we will use this formula, v equals u plus at. v in the, at the top, 0, u, u, v0 sine theta, and angle, uh, and acceleration will be negative, because velocity is up, if we choose velocity positive, then acceleration negative. So time up will be v0 g sine theta. Time of flight will be 2 times this value. Distance traveled forward will be horizontal component, which is v cosine, by time of flight. So here we have function cosine multiplied by sum. If we sketch this function, it will start from 0, because when theta is 0, sine is 0, and finish with 0, because at 90 degrees cosine is 0. Going through maximum at 45, when both are equal, to 1 over square root of 2. So we can't rely on angle because when angle is changing, its uh, part in the distance is increasing then decreasing. This is why we choose choice C. We keep angle unchanged but increase with 0. Question 73. Particles enter a slit in a rotating drum of known diameter and rotation speed as shown above. They strike the darkened region of the target inside the drum, which is at known angle from the slit. With no additional data, this experiment can be used to determine which of the following properties of the particle. I have drawn this picture here. So, S is the distance traveled by particles. Theta is angle to which during this time, drum rotates. So, what is given? This diameter or distance, angular speed, and angular rotation. So, we can find speed. Speed will be distance by time. Speed will be diameter by time. Time we will find from angle and angular speed. Angular speed is angle by time. Time will be angle by angular speed. Finished. So, we can find speed. 74. Two planets that are far apart from the same have the same mass, but planet Y has the radius three times that of planet X, as shown above. If A is the magnitude of the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of planet X, what is the magnitude of the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of planet Y? Uh, if you have some object, it is attracted by gravitational attraction to one of these planets. To know acceleration of this object, you should divide by its mass. Then you will get acceleration depends on mass of the planet and radius. In case for y, this expression can be in terms of uh, radius of the x-axis. Then when we take 1, 9 out of bracket, we will get expression for acceleration in x, which is a. So we have 1 ninth of that acceleration, 75. A car is being pushed up a hill and moves with constant velocity, which is the direction of the net force acting on the car. So constant velocity is the key information. Constant velocity means balance forces, so net force is zero. So we choose last answer. Net force is zero, has no direction. This is the end of the test. Uh, if you have time, you can see that I have used 40 equations. So I slowly will roll this, scroll this equation. So 12 equations. Another 12 equations. Another 12 equations. And finally, 40 equations were used in this test. Thank you for your attention. See you next time.